Thank you very much. <clears throat> group four was also a very um, lively and engaged group, and I was uh, assisted by um, Liza Goldblatt um, in this endeavor. And let's see. I'll our case study, just briefly, we actually dealt with two case studies. One case study was a health educator facing significant challenges to work and family that adversely impacted both teaching and collegial relationships. And the second case study was a colleague with poor bedside manner that negatively impacted patients and students. So as you can imagine, these were familiar case studies to everybody in the room. They recognize these, and, and we quickly were able to identify a number of issues that arose from the case studies. There were issues of burnout, self-care, a lack of personal responsibility, um, challenged role modeling, ineffective leadership, um, access to resources, issues of quality and safety, system issues, <clears throat> communication issues, lack of safe space, scope of practice issues, legal liability, so lots of conversation around individual versus enterprise liability, and lack of skill and training. So those were the, the issues that were framed. Work-life balance, a culture that supports setting no boundaries and taking no vacation, and the need for cultures that support the well-being, the well-being of individuals as well as communities. So that's the big framing of the issues. So as we looked at these questions, um, the first question, can diverse health professionals be held accountable for their collective actions by patients and society? Honestly, for each one of these questions, we said a qualified yes, but it all depends on the context and the circumstances. Um, for this particular question, our conversation focused on the importance of clarity of roles and responsibilities, both individually as well as collectively, and really understanding scope of practice issues. We talked about the importance of alignment of incentives um, and rewards. Um, and, and again, the whole issue that uh, arose of individual versus enterprise legal accountability was germane to this particular question, as were financial reimbursement systems and some hope that we're shifting, at least in the United States, to some um, new models under health reform where there will be more reimbursement based on outcomes and value-based contracts that will be not so tied to individuals and what individuals do. And then we also talked with this question about the importance of understanding the differences in global context. Um, for example, our colleagues from India said that in India, um, if a mistake is made, a mistake is attributed to an individual, they couldn't envision a circumstance where the mistake would be accountable to the team. And so again, understanding that there are going to be differences as well as nuances um, in how this might be applied. The second question was, can diverse health professionals hold each other accountable for decisions made collaboratively? And, and our group actually even had conversations like, maybe this question should be reframed a little differently. Can we hold the collective accountable, um, as well as individuals, for decisions that are made um, collaboratively. So some themes that um, certainly pick up from earlier presentations, the importance of just culture, safety and transparency, and moving from a culture of blame to a culture of learning. Um, also an interesting conversation around moral distress and, and the need to be able to kind of accommodate that issue so that if a particular health professional within the group had serious moral distress, even if consensus decision making was the mode of operation, how do you handle that? And the circumstance that was, um, that was lifted up was a situation where perhaps the interests, uh, decisions were, were being made that were really not in the best interest of the patients, or perhaps the patients and families had not been as germane to the conversation. Then um, lots of um, conversation around information integrity and consensus decision making, and those would be really important factors uh, for this um, accountability um, to work. And then we looked at the third question. Um, what specific measurable attributes should organizations and training programs exhibit to prepare health providers, patients, and communities for this um, new vision of transdisciplinary professionalism? So there's so many themes, I think, that we talked about yesterday that emerged in the excellent presentations this morning on self-care, self-awareness, on leadership, collaborative leadership. We talked about the importance of education and training, that that is core, and content areas we felt were so critical, self-awareness, self-care, health and well-being, leadership, courageous conversations, communication, health policy, the role of other healthcare professionals, um, just culture, and the whole notion of the importance of letting go of ego. Um, also talked about respectful and courageous leadership, and that too is a theme I think that's come out in many ways. 
Then there was another notion, and that was um, um, perhaps instead of trying to kind of cover um, too broad an area, we should be thinking about <clears throat> is there just one of these that we should pick? Sustainability, well-being, leadership as the global forum. So in, in concluding um, my, uh, pr the presentation um, from my group, I, I just want to reflect a little bit on the whole notion of well-being. Because I came up from a number of members who talked about we're, we're not only shifting from a disease model to a health model, but more and more it's really important to say how do we shift from disease to health to well-being. And many people are already beginning to see that in <clears throat> businesses and corporations. Because there's a real recognition that the well-being of the organization is so tied to the well-being of people. And you can look at well-being on a couple of different levels. And certainly even, I think, themes that came out this morning are, are germane to that bigger idea of well-being. So well-being includes not only health in all of its dimensions, physical, emotional, social, and spiritual, but purpose is very connected to well-being. And purpose came up this morning. Purpose matters. Purpose and health are very related. Relationships are so germane to well-being. So what are we doing in our health professions education to really foster um, sort of the understanding of healthy relationships? Um, isolation is fatal. And actually, in the United States, there's more loneliness than there is depression. So understanding that whole relationship is the role of community that nurtures and sustains us. The whole aspect of safety and security. People don't have well-being if they live in fear. And so whether it's individuals living in fear or whether it's organizational fear, fear immobilizes. And then finally, a dimension of well-being, the whole role of the environment. Um, so we felt like um, any of these themes, sustainability, well-being, and leadership, were all future possibilities. Thank you.